and welcome to this date in history, aka TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by other historians, but mainly things we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the smart device application, Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and... On this day.com. Yep, the website. Sorry, on this day.com. Yep. Yeah, the website. Anyway, for links to those sources, the music done by Carrera, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am Ayo Xander, and today I am joined by. MTM. And, and Proto Blob. And who is Alice? Yeah. Or don't smoke. Yeah. Or quit, quit smoking. Quit or smoking. <laughs> quit anyway, smoking. Today is Saturn's Day, also known as Saturday, January, January, oh, December 31st, I'm already next year, what the hell, December 31st, 2022, yeah, Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. Happy this New is, Year's Eve. Yes. I got, uh, I got my hat Happy here, New so, even though my image is reversed, so it's, uh, it's, it's like backwards, so if you can read backwards, you can see it says Happy New Year on my hat. Oh, we lost Alice. Anyway, let's move on up into the history today, shall we? Mr. Blobby Blobbis of the Blobberson Blob Blob. Uh, do you want to start us off in the year 192? All right. And in the year uh, 192, we already have a crazy story for you. Oh, well, yeah. Roman, Roman Emperor Commodus survives poisoning attempt by his mistress, only to be strangled in the bath in, in an assassination plot. Now, this is the guy from uh, that, that they utilized for the movie Gladiator, right? This was Commodus. I don't know, but um, he announced his intention to inaugurate the year 193 as both co uh, as both consul and gladiator on the 1st of January. Ah. So in November he had held ple uh, plebeian games and shot hundreds of animals with arrows and javelins every morning and fought as a gladiator every afternoon winning all the fights. That's an eventful time. Yeah. And Marcia, that's uh, his mistress, um, she found a list of people Commodus intended to have executed and he discovered that she, the perfect Laetus and Eclectus were in it. Uh, so the three of them plotted to as uh, assassinate the Emperor and on the 31st of December, so uh, what we talk about right now, yeah. uh, Marcia poisoned Commodus' food but he vomited up the poison, so the conspirators sent his wrestling partner Narcissus to strangle him in his bath. Well, that's not nice. Getting strangled by your wrestling partner? How rude. Yeah, and that's uh, according to Wikipedia. Yep. So we will put it up in the uh, underbar. Yep. I just have to quickly... Is it... Okay, then, um, now, now, now Ao can put it up in the underbar and I can continue on to the next entry that yes. is in the year 406. 80,000 Vandals, Alans and Swebins crossed the Rhine at Mainz, beginning the invasion of Gallia. Ah, Gallia, is that Gaul or like, um... I think it should be Gaul. Let's but, see here. Uh, no, the, 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 the Emperor uh, at a... Yeah, um, English em Gauls, Empire of the Empire of the Gauls. I I think it should be, but uh, in Germany. Uh, yeah. What is today Germany? Yeah. Well, Gallia or English Gaul was a region of Western Europe during the Iron Age, occupied present occupied by present day France, Belgium, and other neighboring countries. So it was Gaul. Yes. Yeah. All right. And in the year sixteen hundred, the British East. E uh, I messed that up. Sorry. The British East India Company was chartered. That means it was founded. Yes. And it became one of the most influential uh, trading companies uh, in the next few centuries. So I don't know why that's not highlighted, but... Uh, I don't know either, but like, uh, you know, my conspiracy mind is uh, is already racing to figure that out. But uh, like, I was just thinking like, you know, the the whole military industrial complex, like how, how there is no more world today, it's, it's all corporations, like, it's been like that for a lot longer than we think. Like the British East India Company and all these other companies were private companies, yes, but they operated within the parameters and 
you know, like directly under the control of the government. So like the East India Company actually was, you know, as the name suggests, it was out in East India. And then uh, the British utilized that as colonization. Um, so instead of actually like sending armies and invading and stuff and, you know, whatnot, how they, how they usually do, uh, they just uh, colonized through subversion and whatnot. Yeah. So also, kind of like how, also, uh, how China's you know, doing that today with everything. And, and we've been doing that a lot, too. You know, everybody does it. Doesn't mean it's right, but it's been going on yeah. for a long time. So. Also, if I sound a bit different today, it's because I use the headset uh, because of the fireworks outside, so you don't have to hear it. Ah, uh, yes. Because it is, uh, it is a 7 at night for you right now. I don't know why they're, they're doing fireworks all night. That's strange. Well, uh, uh, Germany. Yeah. I guess they, I guess they, uh, they got to blow something up, and they've already tried twice, <laughs> and didn't work out so well, so now they're attacking the air. <laughs> Uh, that's something they can actually hit. Oh my god. Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah, those stormtroopers got really bad aim, oh don't they? Oh my goodness. Wrong empire. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I think it's Alice's turn if she's there. But she's Is muted. Alice here? Yeah, she's there, but she's muted, so I think she's AFK. So uh, let's move on up to you, MTM. Alrighty. The Treaty of Interest. In 1621... Hungarian King Bethlen Gavor and Holy Roman Emperor Ferdinand II signed the Treaty of Mikulov. Ooh. Okay, what is the Treaty of, of Mikulov? Mikulov. 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 Let's see, let's look that up here real quick. Treaty of Mikulov. The Peace of Nikolsburg, or Peace of Mikulov, signed on December 31st, 1621 in Nikolsburg, Moravia, now Mikulov in the Czech Republic, was a treaty which ended the war between Prince Gabriel Bethlen of Transylvania and Emperor Ferdinand II of the Holy Roman Empire. Huh. All right. And as a lot of people, like, you know, they know, but they don't truly realize, like, just how many wars there were, like, you know, in Europe and Asia, you know, in Africa, like, you know, just still going on. Like, you know, we all know about, like, you know, the big ones, you know, obviously World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, uh, Korea, you know, um... Like yeah, stuff in uh, the Middle East and whatnot, but there's always these little wars, you know, sparkled everywhere, like, you know, like war confetti, I guess. So. Yeah, no yeah. one ever talks about the Battle of 1812 or 1814 anymore, it seems like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's we becoming do. a footnote in history, even though we almost, yeah. like, you know, we almost took a fat L there. We lost our capital, and, and then they also burnt down uh, Buffalo, New York, too. We spoke about that the other day. Yeah, and oh. you know what's confusing? There was a war in uh, War of 1812 also in Europe. Oh yeah, there was. That is true. Rocked my between, scissors, <laughs> between France and Russia, so that's yeah. a bit confusing. Yeah, good old Napoleon. In 1660, James II of England is named Duke of Normandy by Louis the Fourteenth of France. All right. And then uh, we have another one in uh, 1695 here. Oh, this I'm back. one! I remember this one. This this is annoying. I, I I just added one in 1680, by the way. Oh, okay. I don't know if you 1680. found it interesting enough. Amsterdam Opera at Lindengrast opens. Is that how you pronounce that? Lindengrast. I, I, I think I think it's Leitzgra. Leitzgra. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Nobody can pronounce uh, that anyway, so <laughs> don't worry. Uh, but then in 1695 here, we have a window tax was imposed in England, causing many shopkeepers to brick up their windows to avoid the tax. Yes. And I have looked into this, and I've spoken about this several times on the show. Window tax. Um, essentially, like, it was a property tax based on the number of windows in a house. It was a significant social, cultural, and architectural force in England, France, and Ireland during the 18th and 19th centuries. To avoid the tax, some houses from the period can be seen to have bricked up window spaces, ready to be glazed or reglazed at a later date. In, in, in England and Wales, it was introduced in 1696 and repealed in, uh, 155 years later in 1851. In France, it was established in 1798 and it repealed in 1926. And in Scotland, it was... Uh, from 1748 until 1798. So Scotland seemed to be the most sane people involving this. Um, 1926. So, so so France had a window tax during the First World War. What the hell? Like, 
That's so strange if you well. uh, if you ever wondered why there's a, a window that leads to a brick wall, uh, it was the other way around. The brick wall was built later. Oh. Yep. There. How's this hat for you? Oh, perfect. I love it. I absolutely mm. love it. What is that? Uh, it's supposed to be a Mardi Gras hat, but you oh. know, it's... But, you know, I, I was like, it's that or it's my, my Michael Jackson blue glitter one for New Year's. Uh... Yes. <laughs> Why not both? Yeah. Exactly. You see, well, wear that. They'll be like, too. why is your hat so floppy? You just take it off. I have a hat under my hat. <laughs> I have a hat under my hat. Thank you very much. But yeah. There we go. There's my New Year's cap. I can already see that being like a Vine video. Because like, like you zoom the camera in a little bit. So you're like, I have a hat. Zoom under my hat. You know? Like. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to do one a little later. <laughs> We'll make a hat joke later. I believe it is uh, Alice's turn to take over. Uh, no, uh, she'll go after me, and then we'll go to blog. Okay, sure. So, uh, but I yeah. guess I guess we can say that's Alice's hat trick. Hi yo. Seventeen hundred. Yeah, start throwing like your hats at the camera for me now. <laughs> it's the hat trick. In 1700, Frisia and Groningen adopted the Gregorian calendar. Tomorrow is the 12th of uh, of January in 1701. That's right. They always skip 12 days. Uh, Thank you. And we also have in 1711, John Churchill, the first Duke of Marlborough, fired as English Army commander. And I think he was the father of Winston Churchill or the grandfather. Let's see here. John Churchill, oh. first Duke of Marmbro. Let me look this up here real quick. So he was the We're first Duke cousin. of Marlboro, that means he invented the cigarette? One would assume, yes. Well, we were talking about this yesterday, uh, how some people have, like, similar, like, the same last name, but they're actually, like, not related. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, it seems he is also not related to the cigarette. Yep. I'm just trying to see if he was well, uh, related to do, 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 do. Oh, I think I froze. Because Marlboro is M A R L B O R O. It ends with an O. I don't think it ends with a U G H. Yeah, Marlboro, yeah. not Marlboro. Yeah, but they, but the, but they uh, shortened that for the cigarette uh, thing. I thought. Well, it says here that John Churchill is his father was Winston Churchill. Uh, yeah, but a different Winston Churchill. So, um, yeah. So I don't know. This is gonna have to require some digging. So uh, I offer this as a uh, as a, um, a challenge John to the viewers. Beard. Yeah. Um, is John Churchill, the first Duke of Marlborough, uh, related to Winston Churchill from uh, the British Parliament during the Second World War, as well as other you know historical things? Winston was involved in a lot of stuff. So. But yeah. anyway, I believe it's Alice's turn. She gets to talk about a scientific discovery. Do I? Let me just get into the screen watch here. I had to back out and back in because I all of a sudden you okay. guys all froze okay. on me. Okay. Well, so we you. have... Uh, no, I got it. Uh, we have 1744 scientific discovery. English astronomer James Bradley announces discovery of Earth. Does that say nutation? Yes. Motion? Oh, the wobble. Oh, yep. how the Earth wobbles. Okay, so he discovered the fact that our Earth kind of wobbles as it moves and orbits around. Well, yeah. you know what people don't under also don't take into consideration, speaking of the Earth's wobble, is that... Our and when we wobble up and down, it does like do a variance of weather patterns, even on the uh you know our magnetic field and all that fun crap so Bam! yeah Let's i think uh you're getting affected by the magnetic oh field. shit crap we got in 1770 wait what? we have in 1758 the british expe yeah the british expe uh expeditionary army uh couples gory uh dakar and a uh, single who is that that just sounds interesting. Dakar is the capital. I don't know if it's the capital. It's Dakar. It, it's oh. the end point of the Paris Dakar already, and it's oh, a okay. very, very significant city in Senegal. 
Yeah, because that's like when I heard saw the Dakar there, I was like, wait a second, I I I know what that is. I've heard of this, but like, yeah, that's interesting. So they uh, the army occupied. It yeah. looks like, and then, and then yeah. we have in 1775 we have the Battle of Quebec. The American Continental Army, led by Richard Montgomery, is defeated trying to take the British stronghold of Quebec City in the American Revolutionary War. General Montgomery is killed, and Benedict Arnold is injured. Yo, Damn! Yo, Alice, you missed it last night. Uh, movie night was crazy. We saw America, the motion picture, which yeah. was uh, 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 involved with uh, Georgia Entertainment, the same people who were involved with Squidbillies and such. Oh my god, that movie oh. is insane. That was pretty wild, yeah. Benedict Dude, uh, send me a link to uh, where you watched it, and I'll, I'll take a peek at it sometime. It's on Netflix. I've been watching Dexter lately, because I finally watched that like revamp of like Dexter and shit that came out, and so I've been on a Dexter binge. Dexter binge! Anywho's, uh, those were my three. Who is next on the line of reading off some awesome news for today? Blobby Boy. Oh my god, it's the Blob. Oh my god, it's in, in, <laughs> oh, Did I, did I freeze again? God damn it. In oh 1776, god. Rhode Island establishes wage and price controls to curb inflation. Limit is 70 cents a day for carpenters and 42 cents for tailors. Well, now back hey. in the day before we started operating in dollars. I, I would say that that, uh, you know, operating that way makes a lot more sense. Nobody oh. got the joke. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I was just no, I was just reading what I missed because my uh, my side it free. You uh, guys all froze on me, so I had to pop out and pop back in. So I was just reading what uh. Well, maybe you stopped dropping wrong. your phone on its head like an infant child. Dude, I haven't dropped this phone at all. Really, I, I mean, it, it's rolled off my leg from my bed, like when I was holding it because a cat jumped and startled me, or Lewis came and jumped on the bed and. I popped out my hands because I wasn't holding it well, but no, I haven't broken this phone at all. It's just, uh, right now it's super foggy out, and uh, our, like, my internet cap capabilities are kind of laggy right now because of it. Alright. <laughs> yeah, these are the facts of life. I love how your head is, like, kind of, like, on the side. It's awesome. That was my point. Like, I wanted to be tapped to the side. I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna be sideways. There we go. There, is that better? Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. now, now, mm -hmm. your, now your hat looks like my nose. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think the hat looks better if it's kind of tipped to the side anyway. Yeah. It looks classy. Anyway, go for it, Blob. Yes, uh, five years if, uh, after this, uh, uh, those wage and price controls, uh, in 1781, the Bank of North America, which is the first United States bank, opens. Yep. That's when they were trying to first uh, start centralizing banks and whatnot. So was that a yes. is that a Bank of America or is that a Wells Fargo? I wonder. Uh, no, the Bank of North America, because the Bank of America was the Bank of Italy, and they got their start just after the San Francisco earthquake back in 1911. Gotcha. So. Okay. The more you know. Do yep. do do. Uh, but the Bank of North yeah. America. Let's see. Uh, it was. You're gonna say was, something, Bob? Yeah, it uh, was uh, chartered on the 26th of May 1781 and opened in Philadelphia on January 7, 1782. Uh, it says here it was established primarily to aid Congress in providing supplies and money for the continuation of the Revolutionary War. Oh, all right, yeah, okay. Hmm. Uh, hmm. This was like, like, because the revolution uh, ended. Uh, like in 1778 or something, I don't know. But yeah, uh, so, this was so before there. we this was before we were the United States. We uh, we were uh, this was in the intermediary period between the revolution and the actual formation of our of our nation as a nation. Yeah, so we so, so we have uh, conflicting information that says uh, it opened actually on uh, January 7th, 1782. Uh, That's when it was so, open. This is when it was chartered. It was founded. So no, this is when the was, idea was first was, presented. No, it was chartered in May. Oh. This this is supposed to be when it opens, but... Uh, well, it says here, founded on December 31st in 1781. 
Well, here in the uh, on this day.com it says open. Huh. Well, I mean, we know our source isn't the best source, so maybe they're because the Wikipedia yeah, here says founded. So maybe founded and open was the same. But thing? Wikipedia isn't the best source either because uh, you know people can go in there yeah, and edit true. things as they will. I think that that the words founded and, and open are facts of life. Yeah. I have a friend who's actually in well, it. Was an actual administrator on there on yeah, Wikipedia. So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, very well known that they have a big uh, bias. Yes. But uh, founded uh, sounds more probable then. So the uh, first U.S. bank was founded. Yep. I believe and founded and opens uh, will be one of the same thing. You know. No, no, it opened a, a week later on the okay. 7th of January, it seems. Okay. Anyway, uh, we will leave that to our uh, viewers to figure out if we got a, anything wrong here or... Uh, we believe it was actually founded on the, uh, this day in 1781, but opened on the 7th of uh, January, like Wikipedia says. But well, we, we can also make wrong. this a challenge to our viewers as well. Like, uh, which one is right? That, was it founded or, or open today? So, that's what I just said. Yeah. We leave this to our viewers. Yeah. Two years oh. later, in 1783, the import of African slaves was banned by all the Northern United States states. That, that as well is something good. I was approving Alice's hat design, but yes, the uh, import of slaves being banned is good. So I thought you'd like this with the hat with my sunglasses up too. Just makes it obvious there's a hat in the hat. Yes. It looks like a hot dog being thrown into a hallway, though. I don't think this is a tight fit. <laughs> Sorry. Alice, oh my god. Hey, the final the final gross joke of the year. I don't even. Anyway, uh, I see uh, there's a cool one here in uh, 1841 for MTM. Alabama in 1841 becomes the first state to license dental surgeons. Well, well how de tarnation. Jeff and I think I think North Carolina or my friend was telling me. Uh, that North Carolina or Alabama was one of the first states to have a community college, actually. So I think you're right too. I think it was Alabama as well, because uh, that's that's kind of ringing a bell right there. And, and you know, it's in such a weird place. You wouldn't expect Alabama to be the first place. Yeah, where, really. You know, dental. No, it, so. but is there anything wrong with that? Alabama's got some cool history, then, right? You they, need, they do. You need to you need to have good dental hygiene if you want to kiss your cousin. Oh, come on! Oh! Oh! Monka TOS again, bro. Nobody likes bad breath. <laughs> 1857, Queen Victoria chooses Ottawa as the new capital of Canada. Wow. Huh. Well, I'm gonna- I'm gonna post this in the Y silent with no context. <laughs> it's just like, confused people. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, geez. cheese and rice for for F six. <laughs> hey, do you like how I like G rated myself there? <laughs> yep, I miss your other hat oh. though. Yeah, it's gonna come back on, but I'm gonna I, I'm I'm gonna go with don't smoke. Ah. I'm not smoking, but I'm smoking. All right, and, uh, Uno Moss, Mister MTM. Uh, I like the one. Uh, I, the one about rainfall seems interesting and poignant too. Two hundred twenty-two thousand nine hundred ninety millimeters of rain falls in Chattapunja, Assam, in India, in eighteen sixty-one, at a world record. Holy crap! What year was that? Uh, eighteen sixty-one. Ah. Getting so a lot here. of rainfall out here in California. Twenty-two thousand nine hundred ninety millimeters to inches is. 905.1 inches so let's see wow here. Uh, let, let me bring out my calculator so what was that 905 905 divided yeah. by 12 equals 75 and a half feet holy frick dude that sounds about that right rain. that's a r outrageous like that's getting an entire ocean dumped on you yeah yeah 75 feet like that's that's depth enough to start actually like uh, you're gonna need like uh, like uh, to to ascend slowly, you know the 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 bends yeah. like 
the, the pressure. Up then. It makes yeah. sense. It's also a really good uh, album to Radiohead, the band. Huh. In 1862, President Abraham Lincoln signs Act admitting West Virginia to the Union. Almost Damn. West Almost Virginia. Yeah. Beautiful countryside by the way. When I when I drove back to Minnesota from uh, Washington D.C., we decided to go through West Virginia. It was some of the best, most beautiful countryside I'd ever seen. Huh. Yeah, Especially in the like you know, the like the Appalachians, it was amazing. I'd like to move to West Virginia. There's a town out there that I really have. My I know. So. The one with the with the river. Well, a lot of them have rivers, but. Um... Well, I know which one you're talking about because you were showing it to me, remember? I, I'm trying to avoid talking too much about it because I don't want people to potentially see where I might be going to in the event that I might actually go there and somebody might actually hunt me down, so... Yeah, fair enough. I mean, hey, like, it's starting to rain! Like, people as big as, uh, as, um, as, uh, Tim Pool, who, uh, you know, is known where he lives, like, he's been doxxed, he's been swatted, uh... He actually has paid nope, armed fine. security, like armed security with yeah. guns, like to, to secure yeah, his yeah. house. So, yeah, we live in a society, you know. So we live in a society. Yep. Anyway, um, MTM, why don't you take these uh, next two? They're in the same year. Nope. Uh, I it's a little. Mr. Mustache long. Man. Right, you and your Hawaii Five O. In 1879, Cornerstone. Oh goodness, too much coffee this morning. In 1879, Cornerstone laid for Honolulu's Lolani Palace, only royal palace in the U.S. Yes. It's, it's not Lolani. Uh, oh, I. Excuse me, that's an I. Iolani. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse my howly accent. Yeah. Right. <laughs> howly, huh? Yeah, that's what they call us, right? No, that's. Also, they misspelled it here. Uh, it should have a, uh, an apostrophe in front of the I. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Ulani. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm looking at it right now. That's a really good looking palace. So, Beautiful. Yeah. Aloha, oi. Yep. And in 1879, Edison gives the first public demonstration of his incandescent lamp. I wonder who he stole that from. Yeah, yeah, I, I, jeez. Maybe somebody who really likes pigeons. Who knows? Alice found the perfect way to wear her hats. Like, yeah, kind fell of. in love with a pigeon. <laughs> Nicholas Tesla. She fell in love with a pigeon. Well, no, remember if you ever watched Drunk History, they, like, talk about Tesla, like, falling in love with a pigeon. The, the yeah. guy is so drunk until he falls in love with a pigeon. I yeah, I, 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 I got show. Oh, it's the Tesla, uh, it's the Tesla drunk history. Yeah. It's freaking hilarious, dude. Like, I, I'm amazed you... I swear to God, I've had you watch this. Probably, like, I, I do remember watching a couple episodes. Uh, it's just, like, it's difficult to, like, as a historian, like, you know, you know me, I take, you know, history very dear, near and dear to my heart. Seeing a bunch of people get, like, you know, plastered and stuff, which, like, you know, I probably do, honestly. But it's just difficult when you want to learn something and you see a bunch of people just giggling and carrying on. It's like, yeah. I want to learn. Like, <laughs> well, no, actually, he does tell like real like history and stuff, but he's just really drunk. Yeah. He, but like, he, but then like you, you, you. Uh, never mind. We'll just talk about that another time, another day, another time. In uh, 1897, here Brooklyn's last day as a city, it was incorporated into New York Brooklyn. City. Yep. Uh, it was in, uh, as one of the five boroughs. You know about that. Um, yep, the five boroughs. Yeah. yeah. It was incorporated, it was... which came to, which comes into effect the next day on uh, January first, eighteen ninety-eight. So, but then uh, we also have um, nineteen hundred one. The in the first election under their new constitution, Cuba elected a Congress and their first president, Thomas Estrada Palma. Huh. That's pretty cool. <laughs> And in, uh, three years later, 1904, the first New Year's Eve celebration was held in Times Square, New York City. Did it? Oh. <laughs> what year? 1901? Yep, 1904. 1904. Oh, so 1904. Oh, so it'll be 100 years in a year? 
No, Technically, well, two, two years. Well, you know what I mean. 120 years in, eight, in two years. Oh, 120. Oh, yeah. Oh, four. Yeah, I'm sorry. My brain. Can't math. It makes me wonder sometimes how you get a correct till when you count out at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, I. you know what? Magic. I'm just kidding. No, yeah. uh, no actually, I'm, I'm good at counting. It's just not with, uh, like, sub sometimes my subtraction gets a little wonky every once in a while. Addition is easier for me, but... Yeah. Well, addition is always the easiest. So... Yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, uh, and this was a question on my mind. I was actually going to look this up, but Blob gets to answer it in 1907 here. Yes. In 1907, uh... In, in 1907, for the first time, a ball drops at Times Square, at Times Square, to signal the new year. All right. Damn. Yeah. Alice infected me with her, uh, you know, uh, with, hurting with, the mapping? with with hurting the brain. Yes. In yeah, with the mapping. Sorry. In, in 1907, <laughs> Gustav Mahler conducts the Metropolitan Opera in New York City. Huh. All right. Cool. He looks familiar. Uh, and we have a, a woman we talked about before on the show. In 1911, Marie Curie receives her second Nobel Prize, this time in chemistry, for her work with radioactivity. Yeah, Marie Curie and her husband. Uh, kind of, kind of funny, you know how I, I don't remember the male's name, but you know. Who is who is her husband? Uh, I don't remember, uh, but oh. she. Pierre, Pierre Curie. Pierre? What was it? Pierre Curie. Ah. She married him, uh, Maria Sklodowska, uh, that was her birth name. Married him in, uh, on the uh, 26th of July, 1895, in Gorgon. Ah. Well, I see one and here um, that, in, if you don't in, mind... In, in, in 1898, they discovered radium, and uh, then did a few more discoveries uh, with radioactivity. Yeah. All right. Your turn then. Uh, no, I was going to say, uh, Blob, if you don't mind, can you talk about this 1910 one here, uh, especially with Little Miss Smoker? All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Then. But then we have to talk about the later ones also in that series. Uh, yeah. In 1910, the United States tobacco industry produced nine billion cigarettes. In 1910. Nine billion? Wow. I smoked it's that in one product. day. It's perfect product. They don't even need to advertise it anymore, dude. <laughs> yeah, nine billion cigarettes. That's like a, a daily yeah, dose sure. of, of our former <laughs> chancellor Helmut Schmidt. Also. That's almost well, as much no. as nine billion in one. Well, can they tell? Can we find out how many cigarettes are produced per year now? No. Produce. No. How many uh, cigarettes will... produced each year? Uh, we yeah. operate um, from P P PMI Philip Morris International. They produce over 700 billion cigarettes every year between 38 production facilities. Holy crap, dude! Uh, yeah, to one billion to thirty-seven billion. I knew there was gonna be a big jump. Uh, no, seven hundred billion, Alice. Oh, seven. Oh, seven hundred billion between thirty-eight. Oh, between thirty-eight production facilities. Jesus. I know. That's a lot of cigarettes. By, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm raiding. I'm raiding a facility. <laughs> I'm just kidding. By the way, for comparison, also in 1901, it was 3.5 billion cigarettes that were sold in the United States. Dang. Damn. So, th so that had tripled within a, a decade. Yeah, that's when people were actually like all smoking, like it was it was illegal not to smoke back then. Yeah, well, like as uh, that one Family Guy skit, like uh, back in the 40s, apparently they put cigarettes in their sandwiches. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Ew. Yeah. What do I look like, a Mary? Of course I want cigarettes in my sandwich. <laughs> anyway, MTM, back to you in 1920. In 1920, International Lawn Tennis Challenge in Auckland, New Zealand, Bill Johnson and Bill Tilden, U.S., beat Norman Brooks and Gerald Patterson. Australasia. Australasia? They, they Australasia? combined, back in the day, they combined Australia and Asia into one thing. Australasia. Okay, kind of like gotcha. how a lot of gaming things do today. So. Like Eurasia, gotcha. Yeah. 
Six four four six six zero and six four for an unassailable three zero lead and ends five zero. Damn! So not only did they get unassailable, but they they scored two more points just to be like, "Screw you! We are undefeated, and we're gonna rub it in your face." So, God dang, man! And uh, ooh, this is interesting here. By the way, the nineteen is decline currently. Oh, good. Been well, twenty yeah. years. Or you know, good old Basically, actually yeah. no. Uh, who was it? Who had the electric kazoo? That was uh, the other guy. Um, I forgot his name. Sorry. Anyway, uh, well, I think the I, the story right above this is is quite interesting too. The last San Francisco Ooh. fire horses retired. Oh so yeah. They're moving towards using engines instead of horses. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Better for the safety of people. And in 1923, the first transatlantic radio broadcast of a voice. Pittsburgh, Manchester. Huh. Yeah. This is MPM you know, coming to you live on the radio. <laughs> yeah, so it seems I was wrong uh, last time that uh, technology with uh, transmitting electric signals, uh, it actually did uh, get to some uh, use. Oh yeah, we were talking about like uh, the patented or received a patent for like the wireless transmission or something the other day. Yeah. Yeah. And this one's uh, this one's intriguing here. Big Ben Chime BBC. ID. Yeah, the Big Ben Chime ID. Dun, dun, dun. Right? Oh, okay. Is that it? That's what it is. I might be thinking of something else. Uh, you know what? Let's uh, let's look it up here real quick. Uh, in nineteen in nineteen twenty-three. Um, also. Um, 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 um. London welcomes a new year. Eight, seven, six, five. Big bench, I might need to Hold on, let me uh, look for an actual thing. Well, it's... Oh, here we go. What I is this? I posted it on the... Uh, yeah. Hey, that's my that... doorbell chime. Is that Big Ben? Yeah. Yeah. That's my doorbell yeah, chime. Sir, I had a, I had a, I ship a delivery out, and so I had to mute myself and everything. So. Uh, anyway, uh, so you got one more the, MTM the in 1924 here. Oh, I, I had background info. The engineers oh. were not were not allowed inside the building. Uh, that means uh, the Big Ben. So they had to. No, wait. Uh. So they had to access the clock tower anyway, which houses Big Ben and the four other bells. I, I don't see what building they could not enter. Probably the parliament, anyway. because the House of Parliament is connected to Big Ben. Yeah, it is. Ah, no, no I, re I read it the wrong way. Okay, so they were not allowed inside the building, so they had to access the clock, uh, the clock tower from the roof of the Palace of Westminster. Oh. As, as a result, their microphone picked up a lot of traffic noise besides the chimes. Oh, but no. the, that was in 1923. Okay. And then a, tra a tradition was started, and from 1924, when the Big Ben bongs were uh, broadcast every day, they quickly became synonymous with the BBC. Huh. Oh. Well, that Interesting. Is, that is really strange because that makes me wonder like, you know, like I live out here in the United States, you know, that we gained our independence from, you know, the British. But the, the standard doorbell out here, it seems, is that chime. Because, like, um, that's weird. Like, you know, my standard chime. door chime was ding dong. Well, that's the. Doo -doo. Yeah. That's before doorbells yeah. got fancy. Oh. Yeah. Can you read this one, too? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yes. I, I guess I don't. 1924, Italian fascist Mussolini orders the, suspre uh, the suppression of opposition newspapers. Ah. Uh. And a little known fact about Mussolini, he was an editor for a socialist newspaper. So that yeah. seems uh, that seems a little, uh, you know, not cool. He's uh, suppressing other newspapers. You know, that seems like an attempt on monopoly there, but he was also a fascist. So, yeah. In this uh, portrait, he looks a bit like uh, Tamora Morrison, actually. I guess. I don't know who that is. Tamora. He's the actor who plays... Uh, Django Fett. Ah. 
Oh, like in the the revamp, or are you talking about? Yeah. About... No, that's Bobo Fett, the old one. Yeah. I guess. I mean, his jaw is a little more square, but I mean, yeah, like, his jaw is a little more Italian? square. No, he's a uh, he's Maori. He's like New Zealander. More, he's a Maori. Oh, oh. New Zealand. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Huh. Oh yeah, got it. Was... Just got back from banning a newspaper I don't like. Ooh, <laughs> fight beans makeup. <laughs> hey, in 1929, we have a encyclical here. Pope Pius XI published encyclical Divini Elias uh, Magistri. So, what the heck does that even mean? Let's uh, look this up here. Where, where are you? Uh, we are in 1929. So, ah, here. Uh, you got uh, you got a link for us, Bob? Um. Oh. In a moment. Okay. Uh, well, it says here I, from the Vatican itself, uh, it's representative on Earth of that divine Master who, while embracing in the immensity of His love in all mankind, even unworthy sinners, showed nevertheless a. Um, uh, nevertheless, a special tenderness and affection for children and expressed himself uh, in those singularly touching words. Squo uh, quote, Suffer the little children who come unto me. Uh, we also on every occasion have endeavored to show the pred predilication, holy paternal, which we bear towards them, particularly by our assiduous care and timely instructions with reverence to the Christian education of youth. End quote. Yeah. Like Speaking of the Vatican, oh. yeah. uh, we have a death that just happened today. Uh. So, oh, oh, today, today. Yeah, we do. Uh, oh, yeah, today, today. I I got a notification before I went to work this morning. Of, uh, I'm just gonna say it now. On um, uh, Pope Benedict, the guy that uh, decided oh. to not be pope anymore, he oh. passed away today oh. at 95 years oh, old. Snap. Oh yeah. Yeah. Huh. Our previous, you know. yeah, he he died this morning, so. Well, rest in peace. Yeah. So. That's a death. Wow. Yep. Anywho, let's move on. Anyway. Moving on up into. Oh 19. yeah, I I I wanted I wanted to uh, say um, where is it here? Um, written between the two world wars and at the beginning of mod uh, modernity, the document, uh, that's the Divini Ilius Magistri, uh, tackles various topics about Catholic education. Pius XI states that the document aims to summarize its main principles, throw full light in, uh, on its important conclusions, and point out its practical applications. Huh. Well, all right then. there. Okay. We also have, there you go. in 1944, during the Second World War, talking about between uh, two you, wars. You, you, you missed uh, 1930. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the second did, one. Uh, I don't see it on here in your DM. Um, oh, oh the, 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 uh, <coughs> the second one in 1930. Uh, the second uh, one? Oh, yeah. Uh, 1930, U.S. tobacco industry produced 123 billion cigarettes in 1930. Good Lord. Jesus. That's a lot of cigarettes. Ah, I smoked those all in one day. That's not healthy. Uh, That's probably why your, your neighbor is telling you to quit smoking, you, you doof. So. Yeah, you're yeah. only allowed to smoke that many cigarettes if you're like a jazz musician. Or a pilot or something. Uh, or a pilot, what, What's to yeah. say I don't play or jazz? Or a traffic controller, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm. I miss. Well, who's to say driver? that I don't play jazz and I'm not an air traffic controller as well, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, it's like the most stressful miss... job in the states. Actually, it's like has the highest suicide actually, rate job of all the jobs. In the no, states. actually, it's dentists that were. Really? Unless it's yeah, it's dentists. They, well, looking into people's t mouths all day long. No, the highest suicidal rate is actually within dentists. Yeah, because they cause a lot of pain to people, and it's it's really you know uh, emotionally just you know destructive, constantly causing like you know even though you know at the end it's going to be good for them to 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 be the yeah. one to put them through all that I, hell, you know, like it, it is you know, just really distraughting, it. you know, like I miss. But no, it's actually dentists. Yeah. Actually, I missed one. Dentists are more scared of you. Let's see here. Uh, images. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to see. 
Oh. oh my Trust me, God. Trust me, I'm just as scared of you as you are of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Great. god! Hell no! What kind of a abysmal monster is that? <laughs> but let's move on up here. 1934. Oh, Helen Ritchie. Can we? Can we? Add, can we add? The, oh yeah, that's what I wanted to say. 34 and 35 also. All right, I will take those two. 1934. We have Helen Rishi became the first woman pilot on an animal transport. That's cool. No air mail. Air mail, not animal. Uh, oh, airmail. Airmail transport. Okay, well, that's cool. Did you know at one point we were experimenting with rocket mail? Like, you yeah. we were actually, like, putting mail into rockets and sending them, you know, to other states or whatever. We did try it, but some of them exploded, I think. I don't know. But then, uh, three Chris. years... What? Uh, Alice, you're lagging out really bad. Yeah. Uh, one year later, in 1935, Charles Darrow, uh, pardon me, patented the game board or the board game Monopoly. It went on to be the first millionaire game designer. And yeah, Monopoly uh, being a, a family and friendship ruiner ever since. Yeah, uh, it was stolen from Antiopoly. Yeah, this... <laughs> Antiopoly. <laughs> yeah, just saying. <laughs> anyway, hey, Mr. Blob. Wow. All right, you. I will uh, continue. Uh, where are we? Uh, 1944. I think 45 now. Okay. 1944. 45. Yeah. I already did the uh, Hungary. I think. No, I didn't. Oh, actually, okay. sorry. Oh, you were not hungry enough. In I, 1944. I in 1944, in the Second World War, Hungary declares war on Germany. Um, which is interesting because at the time Austria was part of Germany and Hungary uh, was the former uh, part of Austria like uh, uh, not, not part of Austria but uh, they, they formed one uh, state like Germany yeah, now they used to be Austria. part of the Ottoman Empire yeah yeah no it was Austria Hungary oh yeah that was one country earlier, and now Germany and Austria were one country since 1938. So that's, uh, I thought that's an interesting fact to bring up. Yep. And one year later, in 1945, before the biggest Adelaide Oval crowd of the season, betting maestro Don Bradman scores his first post-World War, century, post -World War II century. 102 for South Australia versus the Australian services. Cricket. Cricket. Uh, God damn it. Those cricket. Fucking cricket. Yeah, if you don't understand it in sports stat terms, it's cricket. As yeah, your dad he, said. He was the he was the one with the test batting average of ninety nine point ninety four. So he just missed the one hundred. I think and I in, might actually look into cricket just so I can learn what like those stats mean. So like in the future maybe I can break yeah. it down, but you, Same you time, it sounds like a lot of annoying you, work. Yeah. Only Anybody, any American who learns the rules of cricket should have their citizenship uh, taken away from them. <laughs> but she, she only wants to know what a cricket wicket is. Cricket wicket! Yeah. <laughs> cricket wicket! Cricket wicket! Well, it's, it's, it's a record scratch for a DJ. Cricket wicket! Yeah, yeah. Cricket wicket! Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I was but, doing there. But, I remember what you said once upon a time. Yeah. But I, but after that uh, amazing fact, we get to one that's not as important because in 1945, also the ratification of the United Nations Charter was completed. All right. uh, so, of course, that was put, was put second here. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, wait, wait, hey, what was, what was that? What was that bit between the two? Yeah, right there. Oh, the French. Hey, no! I did not know they were in Lebanon. That's weird. 1946 for you. Well, maybe because of the uh, Second World War. Maybe they're still in there, you know, after, because that was part of North Africa, right? Lebanon? Yeah. So, probably they're still. And France did have a lot of. No, Italy had a lot of uh, a lot of claims in North Africa to begin with. That's why we were in there, you know, World War II when yeah. it started. Uh, all, the, uh, all the colonies all down right. there. All right. So, who wants to take the ball from 1946? Who's next in line? 
Uh, well, we just talked about that, so, so uh, I believe it is now MTM's turn, right? Like, we go, uh, yeah, from me to... U.S. President Harry Truman in 1946 officially proclaims the end of World War II. All right. W-W-I-I. Yep. World War Dos. Yep. In sports history... American thoroughbred jockeys Bill Shoemaker and Joe Cologne in 1950 end the year tied, leading the nation with a record 388 wins. Wow. Dang. Wow. Nice. Good job. Yep. Ooh, this is interesting. The first battle battery to convert radioactive energy to electricity is announced in 1951. Oh, wow. That's that pretty OP. Yeah. Yeah. Then, got some sports history here for you. 1952, Danny Nardic Nardico, I hope I'm saying that right, stops former world middleweight champion Jake LaMotta in seven rounds in a light heavyweight non title bout in Coral Gables, Florida. LaMotta is knocked down for the first time only. For the, for the only time in his career, his corner stopping fight after the round. Well, you would have been correct. It was his first time in his, in his last as well. You know? Yeah, his yeah. first, last, and only. Three. You know, you, you had three ways to go, and either one, you would have been right. So. Yeah. Thank you for the support. I appreciate that. It's true. 1952 yeah. as well, we have a Davis Cup men's tennis memorial drive in Adelaide. Uh, Vic Sakes us defeated Ken McGregor in four sets but Australia retained title pardon me for a third straight year defeated uh, US 4-1 to in Adelaide alright and I'm trying to see okay so the next one we did the battery one so then the next one uh, 53 that one uh, we should also take that because we talked about him in 1950 uh, Schumacher yes 1953, Bill Schumacher shattered his record, uh, riding 485 winners in a year. Holy crap. So that's that's more than uh, two per day. Because it's 365 yeah. days in a year. So I wonder yeah. how many races, like maybe like some days he did three, four, five races. That's a lot. So. And he won them all. <laughs> yeah. Dang. We also have in 1955, the Government Motors Corporation uh, became the first U.S. corporation to make over $1 billion in U.S. dollars in a year. Yeah, because of their ties with the U.S. government. You know, General Motors, Government Motors. So. I believe it is now Alice's turn. If she's and there. maybe it's your turn to do the split soon? Oh, that's right. I should do the split. Good job. Uh, part two. We're going to reset our... Uh, our turn, so uh, let's uh, have Blob go first, and then Alice, MTM, and then me, if that sounds cool with everybody. Sure. All right. In 1958, Bill Schumacher was the first down, uh, jockey to win the National Riding Championship four times. Dang, this is turning into the Bill Schumacher show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Also, in the same year, Cuban dictator Fulgencio Batista tells his cabinet he is fleeing the country. Uh... Okay. Because nothing better than when you want to flee a country than to uh, tell everyone in advance. I was gonna say, like, isn't that something you'd want to keep to yourself and you not have them know until you're gone? Like, because they can stop you. I mean, all they gotta yeah. do is, like, you know, grab his hat. Look at the size of that thing. Yeah. And in 1961, the Marshall Plan expires after distributing more than 12 billion dollars. What was so the Marshall that was, Plan? That was the plan to uh, rebuild Germany. Oh, okay. So it expires. So this is uh, this is the end of it. Uh, after twelve billion dollars to rebuild Germany. Wow. Well, um, it, it was actually uh, to Western Europe, it seems. But uh, of course, I only know it from uh, Germany. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have one more, right? Oh, I thought I did three, oh. but I can do one more. All in right. uh, 1961, the National Football League NFL Championship in the City Stadium, Green Bay. The Green Bay Packers shut out the New York Giants 37-0. to 
the first of five NFL titles won in seven seasons span by Packers and head coach Vince Lombardi. Wow, they creamed them. 37-1? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's drumming uh, right there. That's complete destruction. <laughs> yes. Alice, are you there? Alice Staples. Um, like uh, Pam Poovy, quit smoking. I guess she's not there. MTM, do you want to tell us about 61 here? Yes, in 1961, the Beach Boys play their debut gig under that same name. And they get around, round, 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 they get around, da, 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 they get da, da, around. Da, 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 <laughs> get around. Great uh, group. Brian my dad Wilson. saw the Beach Boys live. They performed at his high school once. Like, and what's funny, he, tell, he tells the story better, but uh, apparently, um, like, nobody was uh, buying tickets. So like they sent out uh, they sent out a headhunter to just gather random people, uh, just to like try to garner some kind of like uh, interest. And uh, Dad That's was funny. one of those people. He he was just in the audience, just not having a good time. And they weren't having a good time either because they didn't sell shit. And there's only like half a dozen people in the audience. And it was just it was awful. <laughs> like, but... Gotta start somewhere. Yep. 1962, the match game. Debuts on NBC with host Gene Rayburn. All right, sorry, I didn't mean to highlight that. I was just oh, doing okay. random shit. He's rolling. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I was like, why did he highlight that? It's not a very interesting story. Yeah. Sorry, it's, it's, it's a habit. I just kind of. Oh, like I have to. Things. I have to talk about the next event. Ah. Do you, uh, uh, no, Jerry Garcia. Uh, which one? Scroll uh, down 19, one more. 1961. Ah. 63, Jerry Garcia and Bob Weir play music together for the first time at Dana Morgan's Music Store in Palo Alto, California. Wow. Oh, nice. I've seen Palo that. Alto, huh? That's when they started? I know that, actually. Apparently. Let me look it up where that is. Uh, actually, you, we missed multiple now. <laughs> uh, we have. Uh, it is my turn, and I'll uh, clean up the mess here. Uh, Palo Alto. Oh, so right. just uh, in San Fran. All right. Uh, you said we missed one in uh, 1961. 62. We did the two sixty ones. We did the Marshall yeah, Plan and the Beach Boys. And... Yeah. Um. You talking about this? Uh, this? Uh, this other sixty two? The uh, this one? Uh, Ninety sixty two. Oh, you did the Beach Boys. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. We just uh, spoke about the Beach Boys. I talked about my the story with my dad and such. Um. 1962. The U.S. or the American Basketball League announced suspension of operation. Um, probably because they got uh, sucked into the NBA. So uh, then we also have uh, 1963. The Dear Abby show premiered on CBS Radio. Uh, radio uh, ran for 11 years. All right, Dear Abby. It's uh, it's, it's uh, the precursor to uh, Ask Ashley. Anybody remember that? Your Dear Ashley. No. From uh, from uh, all that. Dear Ashley, that's me. I don't remember. I guess this might have been before your time. I don't know. Yeah, maybe so. Uh, oh. What year were you born in MTM? Ninety-three. Okay, yeah, you you would have missed all of early Nickelodeon. So. Wait, you're you're younger than I am. Well, he, both yep. of us are. The only one oh. older than you here is Alice, and she's not even here to defend herself. <laughs> She's, Man, I guess she's all of our old lady. <laughs> yeah. Man, and uh, l look how sexy he looks, and he's seven years younger than me. <laughs> Damn. That's why I'm on cam, and you're not. That's, oh I mean, shit! Got him. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> High five. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, let's see here. 1960. Uh, 1966, The Monkees, uh, I'm a Believer, hit number one and stayed there for three weeks. Cool. We were talking about The Monkees yesterday. No, I'm a Believer, sure. I didn't leave her, but I tried. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. You, you read that as three weeks and seven weeks? Seven. Did I read it as three? Yeah, you read, I heard three there. Oh, I probably said my brain is just not braining today, because, like, I'm, I am... Like, honestly, I am intimidated by the project I made a week ago. We're going to do that 10-hour stream today, or at least it's going to be 10 hours yeah. for me. So right, I'm just kind of right. like, eh. <laughs> I see. But anyway, let's get back to Blob here. 
Oh, I thought maybe you wanted also to talk about your favorite sportscaster first. Uh, my favorite sportscaster? I can, I can... Okay, I can take but it. But I can do it if you want. Um, I'll go for it. Yeah, okay. Okay, then I'll do it. Uh, we have sports history in 1967. Actually, uh, we talk about uh, John Madden as a coach and sportscaster here. He was probably coach at that event, the AFL Championship in Alameda County Coliseum in Oakland. The Oakland Raiders beat Houston Oilers uh, with 47. Uh, that's 40 points for the Oakland Rider, uh, Raiders and Houston Oilers got 7 points. Yep. George Bland's four field goals for uh, no George Blanda four field goals for Raiders in club's first AFL championship. Well, all right. That's still, uh, in, still a, a pretty good kicking there, forty to seven. Yeesh. And in in nineteen sixty seven, uh, you pronounced the name because I would say Evil Evil again, and <laughs> you told me that's say wrong. It. Say it. I'm gonna do this too. <laughs> All right, in 1967, Evil Nivel, who has not that name, but the, it's how we Germans pronounce him. He fails in Evil his attempt. Evil. There she is. I'm he back. Fails. Right on he cue, fails just in his trying to interrupt somebody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dick. So, Evil Nivel fails in his attempt to jump to Caesar's Palace Fountain in Las Vegas, breaking his pelvis, femur, wrist, hip, and both ankles. Oh my god. Yeah. And that's uh, he, that didn't stop him from being a great stuntman. Yeah. No, Evil Weevil so should was, rename himself uh, to at, Evil Weevil because he, with all those broken bones, he's very limber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You only really fail at the time, if you at break the time every bone. He was, yeah, Go at ahead. the time he was 29, by the way. Oh, wow. You only really fail if you break every bone in your body and then you don't get back up again. Exactly. Whoa. <laughs> Ever think about that? Yeah. It's true. The... Okay. And in 1970, the Congress uh, authorizes the Eisenhower oh. dollar coin. You gotta scroll down a little bit there, bud. Yeah. Which was named after uh, some David who played baseball. The Eisenhower dollar coin. Let me check that up. Uh, before we move up into uh, uh, Alice. Because uh, uh, there's one we skipped here in 1968. Let me look at this uh, dollar coin here. Oh, oh, wait. I copied the wrong thing. Oh, right. I... Eisenhower dollar coin. Oh, okay. Well, here it is. So. Oh, right. Eisenhower. Right, I skipped that. I'm, I'm, I'm Eisenhower in here. Right. I'm Eisenhowering up in here. Oh. So, as I said. So up I, in here. I, up in that's a very so, odd. I told the story before, but in his youth, uh, little David used to be a great uh, baseball player. And um, when uh, he um, wanted to join the, um, uh, th there's some story about the military where he had to join, but he wanted to continue playing baseball. But I don't know how exactly the story went. So. Uh, Eisenhower played baseball, right? Like, yeah, I think we, were, we I remember us talking about that. Like, um, he and uh, yes. Omar Bradley like played baseball together or something. I don't know. Yeah, but act so the story is that uh, somehow um, he should not have been in the military if everything went right, but he was. Hmm. All right. Anyway, Alice. Uh, Got to backpedal a little bit in history here in 1968. You there? I guess she's not. Uh, well, let's move on up to MTM. She, she got eaten by a Gru. Oof. Yeah, she became a box of prime. Oh, God. In 1968, the first supersonic airliner flown, Russian TU 144. Yeah, I think this is the one yeah, we, we were talking about, about the other day. That plane, looks... uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. We talked about it the, the other day. The one that looks yeah. like the Concorde, but it has the ear flaps. Look at yeah. that derpy thing. It's like... <laughs> like such a he's a good boy, thing. isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Like, you know, it drips Hang here. on! I'm here! Oh, there she is. Hey! Hey, look! I got a pointy top! You look like a, an alien. <laughs> 
I am an alien. 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 Oh Welcome shit! To yeah. the Woo! Hey! Look at Paul McCartney again around this time of year, like last year. Remember, Xander? Well, yeah. Welcome to the Pam Poovy Show. Pam Poovy Show. What? <laughs> I am not making a Pam Poovy Show. You should make a Pam Poovy Show. Today, today the 10 best hats. Yeah. I only got, but I only got two. Hey! I got one for my partner in crime. Anyway, so we got 1970 here. We got Paul McCartney files a lawsuit to dissolve the Beatles. What? Yeah, Andrew, wow. I just you talked about it. it. No, we talked I... about it yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, is, so the thing from yesterday was four years after this lawsuit. Okay. Yeah, that's right. 1974. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, the Beatles officially dissolved. So he won. It sounds like. Four years yeah. after the suit. Yep. Hey, uh, look at what I'm doing. I see. <laughs> You're being a This is a fun mix. hat. All right. We also have. A... Yeah. Well, we. God damn it. I can't read now. All right. So we also have. In 1972, we have an Australian Open Women's Tennis. Australian Open Women's Tennis. Margaret Court uh, beats Yvonne Gulagong Kali. <laughs> Gulagong. That's a cool name. 6 4. Gulagon! Uh, 6 4, 7 5 for her record 11th and final Australian singles crown. Now, at, at risk of sounding ignorant, that, that name, Gulagon, it sounds like if you take one of those gongs, you know, from like China or something and like dip it into like Nickelodeon slime and like Gulagon, you know? I don't know. Gulagong, yeah. Yo, took, I was thinking like Billabong, like the, uh, the skateboard, skateboard company. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Billabong, Billabong. Billabong. That's what I was thinking when I heard that. I was Yo. like, oh. In some alternate universe, and we, uh, Billabong is actually like Gulagong. Dude, and we, we, <laughs> dude. Ta we, talk we talked about a funny thing uh, the other day because in 1977, uh, uh, yesterday in 1977, Mrs. R. Cawley played versus Mrs. R. Cawley. I got because, you. Uh, right. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about that. The news. Yeah. It was, I decided uh, not to give her a cold. It was like the a lady cold. from here beating her fellow Australian head and uh, got a Cawley. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the two Cawleys. Had married the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, I, or something like that. Something. <laughs> so now my partner in crime is wearing the blue hat. And I'm wearing the other hat, see? Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho's, we got my last one for my third. Uh, we have in 1972, Martin McGinnis is arrested and held under the New Republic of Ireland legislation. Oh. He was, uh, oh, Sin Fien. he was a Sinn Féin? Sinn Féin leader, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the oh, organizations, or one of those groups, like, you know, IRA or something, I think. I Sinn Féin. Let me uh, let me look that up here on Google real quick. Just to figure out what exactly that was. Uh, yeah, it was it was involved in the Provisional Irish Republican Army, the IRA. Yeah, it says here Sinn. He was... Go ahead. Yeah, he was second in command for Derry and uh, was convicted in 1973 after being arrested near a car containing explosive and nearly 5,000 rounds of ammunition. Oh God, that's not good. Well, yeah, which, which well, he probably did not want to use for peaceful purposes. Yeah. Oh, and he here... was leader of the Sinn Féin. Yeah. It says here, Sinn Féin was an Irish, or is an Irish Republican and Democratic Socialist Party uh, active throughout both the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. The original Sinn Féin organization was founded in 1905 by Arthur Griffith. So I remember, I think we spoke about Arthur Griffith and you know because the link is purple for me uh so i'm gonna put this link into the underbar in the description and i know there's probably been a lot more links that uh blob here is uh, implemented yeah. but um but yeah so uh so yeah he was part of a political thing and so this sounds like uh like yeah they weren't doing the best things um but yeah obviously political motivated such let's get back to mtm um let's uh, have him uh re redo his turn here Absolutely. Um, 
I'm gonna have to go pretty soon. Actually, I gotta make a phone call and do some things for tomorrow, but right. I don't think I'm gonna get to stay for famous birthdays and deaths today. But 1973, Australian Open Women's Tennis. Australian Yvonne Gulang Kali beats. Are we on the right page here? Yeah, did, did we, we, yeah, we already read that. So, sorry. Oh, no, no. Sorry, I'm, I'm following on with your stream. I'm not looking at my yeah. own. No, uh, we're in 73. That's yeah. correct. 73. Johan Kruf, chosen no, no, the, European. The one, no. above, the one above, we didn't read that. Yeah, no, no, Alice read this. I think, didn't she? No, that was 72. Oh, that was 72. I am so confused. So let's just let's just go with this. Okay, 1973, Australian Open Women's Tennis. Australian Yvonne Gulagong Cawley beats Chris Everett seven to six, four to six, and six zero for her first of four home singles titles. All right, yeah, that's why I got confused. This name was in here again. I thought because like, we had already talked about her, but it's this one. Yeah, so yeah. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Blob. Yeah. Hey, that's yeah. why we call him Good Job Blob. He keeps his finger on yeah. the buzzer. <laughs> Thanks, man. 1973, Johan Kuf, chosen European football player of the year. Should be yep. a space between the and year there. Yeah. Well, Is he <laughs> you think they actually care? Oh, gosh, here we go again. <laughs> Australian wo Open Women's Tennis, 1974. Australian Open's Women Tennis, uh, Australian uh, Yvonne Gulagong Collier re retains her title and beats Martina Navratil... It's a lot of vowels. Nav Navratilova. Navratil Nav Navratilova of Czechoslovakia, 6-3 and 6-2. Czechoslovakia. Um, Czechoslovakia, actually. Yeah. yeah, it's a word we all know, but when we try to read it, we go brain dead. Like, you know, you're not alone in that at all. Like, um, but Martina yeah. uh, Navratilova, another great tennis player. So this must have been a, an amazing match, although it ended really quick. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Mr. Blob here, you got uh, 1974, uh, where is it? Here it is. Yes. In 1974, popular electronics displaced their Altair 8800 computer. Huh. Let's see what that looked like. We're probably going to laugh. It's probably going to be like a room computer. Oh, it's one of these. Huh. All right, that's pretty cool. Look at all the chips. Well, well it was based on the Intel 8080 CPU, so... Uh. And that thing has more chips in the, than a Lay's bag. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Yep. And in 1976, the Cars played their first gig. Never heard of them, but cool. The Cars, they're pretty cool. What do you mean you never heard of them? I, wow. As far as a band, that... I haven't heard of them. Oh, um, wow. That's uh, one uh, band to look up later. I'm gonna go, yeah, listen to some cars while I'm in the shower later today, because of that. Huh, nice. And in 1977, we have Australian Opens Men's Tennis, Aus uh, American Vitas uh, Gerulaitis wins his first and only Grand Slam event, beats Englishman John Lloyd, 6-3, 7-6, 5-7, 3-6, 6-2. So Lloyd struck back after being uh, in the 2-0 uh, uh, match uh, uh, um, corner, but uh, eventually uh, Vitas uh, won. Must have been a long, long match. Like, yeah, that's a lot of numbers there. Alice, is Alice there? Yeah, sorry, I'm having. Yeah, I'm here. I'm just having crappy internet issues right now, so I'm like keeping. I had to restart my phone to see if that would make it better, but we'll see what happens have here. So where are we at now, my friend? Oh wait, it's gonna. Look up. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? Well, clearly you have it, you don't remember doing hey. It. Probably not. I, I just figured my phone was fairly new that it was already updated, but no, you know. Gotta All right, updates. we have a 1977. I, well, I'm sorry. 
Look, I I thought you wanted me to read this one. I do. So I was no, starting I'm, I'm it. I'm updating myself. Okay. Oh, we're, yeah, we're in seventy-seven. Yeah. Yes. Okay, nineteen seventy-seven. Ted Bundy escapes from jail in Colorado. Uh oh. We all know about Ted. Hi oh no. Not to be confused with Al Bundy. I've been from, watching uh, Dexter. Love and and yeah. Oh my god. Well, that's called Mary. No. Oh. with children, not love and marriage. That was a theme song from uh, Frank Sinatra. Love and marriage. Or is that Tony Bennett? Uh, I thought it was Sinatra. Maybe. Yeah, I thought it was Sinatra too, so. Oh, shit snacks. What do we got here? We got 1980 now. Uh, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, uh, the River Tour. The concert at the Nassau Coliseum in uh, Uniondale, New York. Clocks in at almost four hours, so he did a four-hour-long show. Wow, that's pretty wicked. Yeah, that's, wow. that's that's your money's worth back there, especially in 1972 wow. when they weren't like outrageously charging you for tickets. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, 1980. Yeah, that was back in the day when. Bruce Look at what they're charging for tickets there. now. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hang on a second. Why is my Oh, we have an appointment of interest in 1983. We have Benjamin Ward appointed as first American New York City Police Commissioner by Mayor Ed Koch. You missed, or Kooch? You, you missed one word, uh, which uh, makes the thing very... Uh... Mark at TOS, yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, well, sorry. Benjamin Ward appointed first American American New York City Alice. Police Commissioner. Alice, it's African American. Oh, sorry, like, I'm sorry, I can't... It's a little blurry right there, I just saw that... God damn it. Are you having a I am just again? so bad when I... No, it's not yeah. that I had a moment, it's just that, like, uh, when I'm reading it, my, my script right here, like, because I'm screen sharing with you on your side, it, it just sometimes makes the text blurry, where I can't properly read it, so... So, so I was like, that spells like American American. I'm like, wait, why is it spelled wrong? Wait, oh, African American. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, well, no, this is what happens when you have like a blurry script on your phone, so. But yeah. All right. Benjamin Ward. And that's interesting because yeah. he's, he's whiter than Chalk, just like Elon Musk, who is also an African American. Is that, is so. that Ed? Is that him or is that Ed? Yeah, that's Ed Koch. Oh, that's me right yeah, and So Benjamin Ed, Ford. Ma Why the way, are they taking a picture of him? I don't know. Oh, here we go. Because be, because he was the mayor. But uh, Ed Koch, uh, he was also um, the guy who was helping with organizing the concert in Central Park by Simon and Garfunkel, by the way. Huh. Oh. Oh. Alright then. Yeah, he... Uh, or at least they thanked him. Uh, that was the same year, also '83, I think. I believe uh, it is now MTM's turn. Can... Which does MTM stand for anything? Like MGM Coop. or something? Data. No, uh, I'm, I'm making a video about that. It's, it's gonna try to release it today. Okay. It'll go up on the channel. All right. It's a, it's a English hieroglyph. Actually, oh, okay, representation of something. 1983 President Shigari of Nigeria is overthrown in a military coup, and Major General Muhammadu Buhari is installed as head of state. Muhammadu oh. Buhari, yeah, all right. And we spoke about this uh, yesterday, the day before. Um. Yes. I have a picture of Benjamin Ward here. 1984, U.S. leaves UNESCO. UNESCO. It was just UNESCO, uh, United me. Nations, uh, you know, I, I can't remember for the life of me. UNESCO. United Nations needs to get a life, is what it stands for. Uh, it stands for uh, the United Nations Education, Science, Culture, Communication, and Information uh, Society. So, I spoke about that yesterday, I believe, or the day before, talking about uh, the French baguette, which is now a uh, UNESCO World the Heritage. The baguette. Day. Yeah, the French baguette. Uh, because of, like, you know, all the lockdowns and all the modernization, you know, over the past century and whatnot, the actual, like, art of, you know, hand-making baguettes, you know, and, like, the little bistros and the little corner markets, the mom-and-pop 
you know, little things. Like, it's becoming a lost yeah. art, and we went on a whole conversation. I went crazy about castles. <laughs> but it's all about, like, you know, like, like uh, it was very much at risk of being a lost tradition and, you know, forgotten about, like, as far as hand-making things, you know. So, like, it was uh, adopted uh, or put into the UNESCO World Heritage thing uh, to save it. So, you know, the, the humble baguette. Uh, oh, ooh. that's cool. Fog oh, the the whole the the whole artisan of uh, a bread making and stuff. Like I remember making like dough from scratch at a pizza joint, and I mean it's different. But also like uh, a place I used to work at once upon a time was Panera. Panera tries to keep up with it, but they have the people make it in a bigger like area by hand, and then they send out the the baguettes for us to just, just like suck, like. But they are still done on a. Natural level, I guess, is so. It sounds like if they're mixing uh, yeah, okay. like industrial I, with uh, handmade, like they, they they make the stuff you know pre-made industrial, and then you do the finishing touches and then bake it, right? Yeah. Well, also, Panera has lots of uh, scandals. <laughs> And we were just joined by Glado. Hmm. Glitching out over there, yeah, lost the CPU or two. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you got another one here, uh, Mr. MTM, 1986. Russia. <clears throat> Russian TU-144 flies for the first time faster than sound. And so that was a couple years later, right, on the date? Like, like we talked about that, that same... Yeah, yeah. Thing. When was it? Actually, it should say here, 1968. Wow. So 1968 to 84. So that's uh, that's 16 years. Dang. Yeah, that's that's the age gap yeah. that my sister and I have. Huh. 1988, and it's too bad uh, Doom guy isn't here. The fog bowl, a heavy, dense fog rolls over Soldier Field in Chicago during the second quarter of the Beavers versus Eagles NFC Divisional Playoff game. It cut visibility to 15 to 20 yards. Uh, Bears win at tw uh, 20 to 12. But look at that! Like, can you imagine playing a football game with that visibility? Like, no, absolutely can't. Just well, like, wow. kick a field goal into the ether and uh, hope it, it lands. You know. Yeah, it has less visibility than Silent Hill. Oh my god, it does. Ah. Yo, Alice, you're glitching out really bad. Like, all, all we hear is electronic uh, noises. You sound like an electric kazoo. <laughs> yep, yeah, <yeah>, robot. <laughs> 1988, we also have Pittsburgh NHL center Mario Lemieux uh, accounted for all of his team's goals in the Penguins' 8-6 to win. Uh, over the New Jersey Devils, famously scored five goals each in a different way, even strength, power play, shorthand, penalty shot, and empty net. Also three assists. So, dang. Variety guy. That's incredible. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> then we also have 1989, Me and My Girl, closed at Marquee Theater in New York City after 1,420 performances. Holy crap. Yeah, I thought that's a lot of performances. Uh, 420, smoke them. Oh. Which, that, by, the that way, also. by the way, which reminds me, um, at the at uh, the seven hours in to our uh, long uh, live stream today, somebody needs to remind me uh, that I gotta take a hit live on air at the seven hour mark because that is 420 oh minutes. Oh my god! I did a, I did the math. 420 minutes is seven hours. <laughs> well, then, uh, uh, okay. Let's go back to Blob here, 1989. All right, in 1989, jockey Ken Desormu uh, sets a record with 598 wins in a year. Wow. There's Just a lot more horse jockeys. racing than I can even imagine. Like... And it, it's completely insane, apparently. Now we are up to nearly 600. Yeah, that's like almost two uh, average two races a day. So... I hope it's not all on the same horse, or otherwise that's uh, one big animal abuse. I that's, don't know. That's poor. That poor horse. No. Oh yeah. Yep. 
In 1993, Barbara Streisand performed her first public concert in 20 years before a sellout crowd of uh, over 25,000 at the MGM Grand, uh, Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, you mean crows? And Sold out to a bunch of crows? No. <laughs> the, uh, uh, Spell I don't mistake. know. <laughs> Those crows are pretty smart, man. I don't know. Maybe they really like that Barbra Streisand. Yeah. I mean, that's how why they made the air photos in the 2000s. That's how the term Streisand effect came to pass. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was actually a big murder of crows. Well, this one's interesting. Mr. Blob, if you want to take this 94, that, uh, the snowless one. All right. We have the first snowless December in Baltimore, Maryland, December 1994. Dang. I lagged out for a second, and Blob, you were super fast on my end. So, like, but I can hear everything. Just a little bit fast. All right. Also, in 1994, uh, we have uh, two more interesting ones. The anti-apartheid group of Netherlands, AABN, was uh, disbanding. And the date, uh, the... Uh, uh, 31st of December is skipped altogether in Kiribati as the Phoenix Islands and Blind Islands change time zones from UTC minus 11 to UTC plus 11 13. and UTC minus 10 to UTC oh yeah UTC plus 13 that's uh, again and the Phoenix Islands changed the time zone from UTC minus 11 to UTC plus 13, and the Line Islands changed the time zones from UTC minus 10 to UTC plus, four, uh, plus 14. Now, now we got it. Time zones are weird. <coughs> like, there's a lot out there that actually yeah. have uh, 30 minute discrepancies rather than the whole hour. Yeah, Newfoundland yeah. and California actually have like a 30 minute time discrepancy. It's kind of weird. It was. It's no. It's not California. It's uh, Arizona, I believe. Arizona, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's weird. Like, uh, my half-brother is a half-hour ahead of me. So, it's already almost noon for him. It's 11.30 <laughs> over here. So, so he's your half-hour brother. My half-hour brother. Like, he's your half-hour brother. My half-hour brother. Who's also my nephew, legally. <laughs> so... Anyway... I uh, uh, didn't know you were in Alabama. Uh, no. But I was born in Tennessee. That's close. Uh, Let's continue, I think. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, 1995, we have cartoonist Bill Watterson ended his Calvin and Hobbes comic strip after 10 years. That's sad. Believing he had achieved all he could do in the medium. I mean, better to go out on your own terms than to try to keep milking the cow, but Calvin and Hobbes, you know, yeah. I was never much of a comic guy, you know, but Calvin and Hobbes, I love that. It, you know, so me. So... Everything that can be invented has been invented. <laughs> yep. And there's also, like, speaking of comics, there's this comic called Zits in the, uh, that I used to read in the Sunday uh, newspaper every day. Um, That's great. Uh, yeah. And, uh, it, but it wasn't Zits that I was thinking about. It was this other one. Um, I forgot. I forgot what it was called. But uh, the comic was about these parents with their two kids. And, um, like, uh, this one specific... Uh, you know, panel I'm trying to remember is like uh, it showed up. it showed the garage just full of toys, full of crap and everything. And then the kids were like, "Oh, I wonder what we're getting for Christmas this year." It's like, bro, you have a garage of stuff. Like, you're good. Are you talking <laughs> about uh, Baby Blues? Yes, yes, Baby Blues. Thank you. I was a big comic guy back in the day. You, you remember Mama? Who? Mama. Like that short old lady who like always like uh, like let's see if I can find it, Mama. Mama comic. Mama comic. Yeah, this one here. Short lady. No. Yeah. I never saw this. Mama. I love those. Mama. Mama. Oh. Riff mama. Yeah. Mama Osama. Anyway, uh, 1997 here we have Microsoft. Microsoft. Uh, Actually, we're. Uh, I'll leave that. Micro for, uh, cipher. Micro blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I, I had a brain fart there. Uh, 1997 Intel cuts price of the Pentium 2 233 MHC from $401 to $268. Okay, that's a pretty good drop. Ooh, yeah. Pretty big drop, yeah. Yeah. 
And then, uh, I believe, uh, MTM, did we skip you? Like, I don't know, but with Alice popping in and out, really screwed up my system. Yeah. So. Microsoft buys Hotmail email service for $400 million and relaunches it as MSN Hotmail. Ooh. It's the price of doing business. Yeah. Yeah. And no, not that one. Uh, I'm Microsoft. This, yeah. South Africa and U.S. surgeons separate Zambian Siamese twins joined at the head in 1997. Oh, wow. wow nice. That's crazy. Yeah. You always hear about these uh, very extreme medical cases coming out of Africa. It's kind of fascinating. It wasn't like the first successful uh, win was the first successful separation of conjoined twins. Uh, 1689. Like, that's a long time ago. Yeah. I think we had that on the show, actually. We did. Yeah, no, that's why I was looking it up, because I remember we were, you know, we were talking about a conjoined twin, so it's like... You know, the first separation successfully was like a hell of a long time ago. You know, it's very surprising. There was this other crazy story about this woman who was uh, was pregnant for like 17 or 18 months. Oh my god. Because her feet, in, in Africa, yeah, her fetus was in the wrong place. So her body saw that as a foreign object and just attacked it and bombarded it with white blood cells. Oh no. And yeah, it's wow. crazy. Did the baby survive? I don't know. Oh. Absolutely not. Hmm. Well, 1998. Viewers, so. Yeah, yeah. 1998. Yeah. Exchange rates between the euro and legacy currencies in eurozone become fixed. Oh. Well, all right. That's good. U.S. movie box office hits a record 6.24 billion for the year in 1998. That's, wow. that's pretty good. What's uh, the box office record today? Box office record. Uh, um, I think Av yeah, it's Avatar. Well, yeah, but no, like you know, this is uh, this is in total. Like this is all the movie tickets sold for that entire year. Because like, Avatar is only at two billion, you know, or almost three billion. So box office record, 2022 sales, I guess. Uh, no. Uh, well, I guess, uh, here we go. No, that's total. Oh, here we go. Worldwide box office. Um, well, it's just telling me individual movies, so I guess that's going to require more digging. Anyway, Mr. Blob. Yeah, I found actually, um, an article about the uh, 1689 separation of the conjoint twins with a picture. Oh. oh. So we'll post it in the honor bar. Alright. Anyway. In Euro uh, news. In, in 1999, Boris Yeltsin resigns as president of Russia, leaving Prime Minister Vladimir Putin as acting president. That's right. Putin that was, bitch. Yeah, Putin was president he, until like 2008, 2010, somewhere in there, and then he was replaced and then he came back. Yeah, by Med Medvedev. Yeah. Dmitry Medvedev. Yep. But uh, anyway, you know the story about how the Soviet uh, Union really fell? How? Like, Boris Yeltsin was a guest in the United States and saw a supermarket. Yeah, that's right. And then he thought he won this in Russia. Yeah. And then uh, that's how communism ended and the Soviet Union with it. Yeah. You want to uh, you want to appreciate the end of communism? Go down to your local supermarket and, and thank them. So like Piggly Wiggly, Alpha Beta, Vaughn, Stater Brothers. Um, you know, there, there's a lot more out there. Yeah. That I, uh, why can't I remember this? Smart and Final is another one. So that which brings us to today's sponsors: established supermarkets. And in 2005. Jamie Dimon was named as CEO of JP Morgan Chase. Oh, okay. Yeah, Chase and, Bank. And oh, in in 2004, uh, we have the official opening of Taipei 101, then the tallest sky, uh, skyscraper in the world, at a height of 509 meters. That's 1,670 feet. Yeah, the Taipei 101. Uh, this one. Oh yeah. Uh, pagoda style uh, skyscraper, really cool looking. So, and that's yeah. uh, Taiwan. 
right? Uh, it should be uh, with that name. It should be in Taiwan. Uh, Taipei 101. Um, yeah, Taiwan. Okay. All right. Yes. Formerly known as the Taipei World Financial Center. Hmm. I believe it's uh, back to MTM. Right. We're going to rotate this way. In 2014, yeah, the last a oh, What? Uh, you lagged out for a second there. Oh, you're lagging again. Am I lagging? Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, um, could be the rain. Uh, you're back now. Okay. In 2014, Beji Kaid Asebi is as as sworn as in as Tunisia's first as Asebi. Yeah. Is sworn in as Tunisia's first ever freely elected president. Ooh. Nice. Tunisia. In 2016, Chris Ophili is appointed as commander of the Order of the British Empire (CBE). In 2017, New Year honors for services to art. Huh. Yes. That's interesting. <clears throat> Order of the British Empire (CBE). What? Oh, commander of the Order. That's that's weird. What? But he's a painter. That, I I don't understand. Yeah. Any British people? Can you uh, educate me about this? Oh, look, it's uh. Well, is that? Essentially, he was he was knighted before he uh, because of his painting. Oh, okay. oh that's okay. what I understand. <coughs> like Paul McCartney, yeah, uh, we talked about that yesterday. Is it still my turn? Do I get to read another one? Uh, or... Yes, you have uh, one more here. You got to take. You get no, you get to talk about Indian uh, Danny Dorito here. Indian Danny Dorito. Take the last two. 2017 Indian movie star Rajnika. Rajinikanth announces he is entering politics. Wow. Ooh. Actor and politician. Look at that. Yeah. And Lord. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, take take that one also. 2017 singer Lord called a bigot an ad in Washington Post after canceling show in Israel. Wow. Can't Can't make them all happy, can you? Lord, Lord, Lord. Yeah, by the way. I am Lord. Wa Lord, Lord, Lord. The Washington the Washington Post has the white power logo, by the way. Oh god, it does? Yeah, it has a WP in the name in a oh very my god. Uh, interesting font. Wow, really? You're gonna it, go there? In, oh my god. No, in, in, a, in a very interesting font. Yeah, I see. You, uh, yeah. Huh. That is interesting. Anyway, before we move on to births and deaths, uh, audience, were there any articles that grabbed your attention more than most? Anything you wish we'd elaborated more about? Although I don't know how much more elaboration we could have done today. Uh, anything you would have liked to add to it? Have you been on the show? Start a dialogue in the comments section. Anyway, let's move on into bursts. Uh, let's have uh, let's have MTM start us off. You know, just give him a little. Uh, bit of I'll time. I'll read this first one, but I'm gonna be signing off after this, and I'll be okay. back for the live stream. Okay. All right. Six ninety-five. Mohammed bin Qasim Umad General, born in Taif, Saudi Arabia, died seven fifteen. That's not old. Uh, 695 to 715? No, that's uh, 20 years. That's young. Oh. Yeah, so... Yeah, people had short life expenses back then. He was leading the Muslim conquest of uh, Sindh, which is part of modern mm. Pakistan. Mm. And... Uh... Alright. What? what, what? No, no, that can't be right. What? He's, he started at Conquest at 12 years old? Well, maybe he might have been the figurehead in power, but he's, it's not his idea. You know? Or maybe, I don't know. 12 year olds can get really violent. But hey, MTM, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. And we are looking yeah. forward to seeing you in our extravaganza. See you then. All right. Have a good uh, one. Yeah. You too. Have a great rest Thanks. of Thanks. And feel free to join us anytime again. Yes. Anyway, your turn, uh, Rob. So our, yeah, I just want to leave it as a challenge to our viewers to find out more uh, about uh, if Muhammad bin Qasim really uh, already was a leader of the uh, conquest at 12 years old. Yeah. 
That so in uh, 1378, we have uh, um, Pope. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Pope Calixtus III, also known as Alfonso de Borja, that was his uh, civil name. He was head of the Catholic Church and ruler of ruler of the Papal States from 1455 to 1458. He was born in the Kingdom of Valencia and died in 1458. Dang. And in uh, 1491 we have Jacques Cartier. He was a French explorer who claimed what is now Canada for France. He was born in uh, St. Mal uh, Malo, Brittany. Huh. And he died in 1557. Alright then. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to do us another split here real quick. Welcome to part 3. We are still uh, in the early vestiges of verse. We have Andreas Vesalius in 1514, was a Flemish physician and anatomist, de humani uh, corporis fabrica, born in Brussels, Habsburg, Netherlands, which is now Belgium, died in 1564. All right. And then let's see here. Where's, uh, there we go here. So your births don't even start till the 1900s. So going to move on. Bonnie Prince Charlie. Hey, I know that name. Uh, born on the state in 1720, he was an English pretender to the throne the, during the Jacobite Revolution. Born in uh, Palazzo Muti, Rome, Papal States. Died in 1788, I believe, through execution. Uh, no, a stroke. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he was not uh, able to claim his, um, his his throne. And then, yeah. ooh, this guy. Yeah, I, I confused it earlier. I I thought I had the first thing in the birth, uh, but I had the first thing in the deaths actually uh, huh. written and down for later. Anyway, in 1738 we have uh, Jacques, Jacques Convalis, no, no, Charles Convalis. He yep. was the first Marquis Con Convalis, British general and colonial administrator, leading British general in the American War of Independence. He was born in London and he died in 1805. Yep. And, and a little known fact about Cornwallis Nova. here is after he lost in the uh, Americas, he went on and fought another war uh, somewhere else, I believe. Well, it says he became Governor General of India and the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland. Hmm. That's a, that's a big range right there. Oh. Yeah. So... Under his, uh, um, under his, uh, uh, so the British forces under him, they signed the terms of surrender to George Washington and Comte de Rochambeau at Yorktown uh, in 1781. By the oh. way. All right. So the war Which did ended, last in the 1780s. Yeah, that ended the U.S. Revolutionary War. Yep. And a little known fact, uh, or maybe I don't know. Uh, but uh, Cornwallis was in so much shame for losing to a bunch, an army of, of rebel, uh, you know, rabble peasants and stuff, that he yeah. didn't personally uh, hand his sword off to Washington in defeat. He said his second in command do it for him in his stead. What a coward! Wow. Yeah. He, like he was so egotistical, he couldn't bring himself to accept uh, surrendering to what he considered to be lesser people. Like. Like you want to talk about racist? That guy was to his own people, you know. I, I mean, I mean, they just were some guys who drank beer in a pub and then uh, thought, uh, uh, "We don't want to pay uh, ninety-five percent taxes anymore." <laughs> yeah, no taxation without representation. Hey, you got a painter here. Yes, we have Henri Matisse. The French Impressionist painter in 1869, uh, today is his birthday. He painted the Odalisque uh, and was born in Le Cateau, nine, Le Cateau Cambrecy in France. And he uh, died in 1954. Huh. Let's see uh, uh, what this, uh, this painting France is. Oh, is France Unity. in France, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so this one here. So he yeah. painted that one. And impressionist, that's when you're when you like you you're dotting. So this is in brush strokes, he's like dotting the, the right? That's what impressionist is? Uh I don't know currently what 
painting has so many schools, it's really confusing. Actually. It says here, Impressionism uh, was a 19th century art movement characterized by relatively small, thin, yet visible brushstrokes, uh, often composition, emphasis on accurate uh, depiction uh, of light and its changing qualities. I'm going to add this in the underbar as well. Ordinary subject matter, unusual visual angles, and inclusion of movement as a crucial element of human perception and experience. Yep. I would make a joke if we were not on the show <laughs> about unusual angles. Oh my God. But it's your turn and we talked about his plan earlier. Yes, the Marshall Plan. We have George Marshall, born on this date in 1880. He was a U.S. General and U.S. Secretary of State from 1947 through 49, who authorized the Marshall Plan and got the Nobel Prize in 1953 for that, it sounds like. He was born in Uniontown, Pennsylvania and died in 1959. And indulge me, what was the Marshall Plan yet again? Uh, the rebuilding of Western Europe after oh, yes. World War II. All right, yes, that is true. We also have... So, uh, that, that's why Western Europe uh, became economically uh, strong very quickly again. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, otherwise I probably wouldn't be on the show. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let us all thank, thank, uh, thank this guy for his plan. And he earned that, uh, that Nobel Prize back in the day when the Nobel Prize actually meant something. So, yeah. We also probably have Guy Nobel Millet. I'm sorry? It's probably the Nobel Peace Prize, but I tried to okay. look it up. Yeah, it just says Nobel, but you know, as we yes, yes, it, it's the Nobel Peace Prize. Okay. Was awarded to George Cutlett Marshall for proposing and supervising the plan for the economic recovery of Europe. Good. And yeah. as you saw, it brought stability to Europe. Yes, we needed that really badly. Uh, maybe somebody else who brought stability to Europe was Guy Mollet, born on the state in 1905. He was a prime minister of France from 1956 through 57, born in Flairs, France, and dying in 1975. So, 70 years, roughly. And then you got one in 1908. Somewhere yes, in 1908 we have Simon Wiesenthal, Jewish-Austrian Holocaust survivor and Nazi hunter, who was founder uh, of the Wiesenthal Center also. Uh, he was born in Buchach, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine. He died in 2005 and the Simon Wiesenthal Center in, uh, I think, Ludwigsburg, uh, it is the a center in Germany where Nazi crimes are um, uh, investigated and uh, then afterwards they are given to the police or the prosecution um, if there is a um, what you Americans would call a probable cause. Yeah. Uh, you got so, another uh, one here, 1928, yeah. Yeah, so they can uh, investigate further then. And in 1928, we have Amarillo Slim. Uh, that's his nickname. His uh, name, uh, his actual name is Thomas Brenton. He's an American Hall of Fame professional poker player. He won the 1971 WSOP uh, main event, World Series of Poker. He was born in Amarillo, Texas, and he died in 2012. Uh, all right, poker. Yes, he won uh, the bracelet at uh, 1971. We also uh, have Salman bin uh, Abdulaziz al Saud, born on the state in 1935. He's 87 today. He's the current king of Saudi Arabia, serving from 2015 to present. Born in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So happy birthday to that guy. Happy birthday, Mr. Uh, king. And then we also have Anthony Hopkins, 1937, a Welsh actor, Elephant Man, QB, VII, Magic Bounty, born in Port Talbot, Glamorgan, Wales, and he is 85. Happy birthday to him, too. Uh, Hannibal, by the way, Hannibal Lecter. Oh, he played, oh yeah, Hannibal. Okay, yeah, that's why it looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. And you got one, uh, here we go. All right, in uh, 19, uh, let me check my notes. Yeah, next one is 42, Andy Summers. 
yes we have alex ferguson it's his 80th i'm sorry in 1941 we have alex ferguson it's his 81st birthday today he's a scottish football manager for manchester united from 1986 to 2013 and for aberdeen from 1978 to 86 so before that he is regarded as one of one of the greatest of all time born in glasgow scotland nice uh, well manchester united dominated uh, the european um, uh, it is called the uefa cup and the champions league so the european uh, soccer for, um, for many years to, together with other clubs but they were one of the top clubs nice and in, in 1942 Andy Summers uh, was born he is English rock guitarist for the police and uh, he was born in block in Blackpool Lancashire so police Man. and rock sand is that rock sand that one yeah I guess okay. I only know a few others by the police like do do, do, da, da, da. Huh. and me message in a bottle and you know I'm gonna have to look that up because I I wonder if that's the Roxanne I'm, song I'm thinking of so I'm gonna put that up on the, the YouTubes we also have John Denver this is the guy who did Country Roads Take Me Home to the Place I Belong West Virginia Mountain Mama Take Me Home Country Roads uh, born yes. on the state in 1943 a US pop singer songwriter a songwriter Leaving on a Jet Plane, which is a good uh, song. Uh, country pop singer as well. Uh, Sunshine on My Shoulders, Calypso, Thank God I'm a Country Boy. An actor, oh God, born in Roswell, New Mexico. Oh, 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 oh. I know that city or that town or so whatever. So his, his music truly was not from this world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he went back to his planet or died in uh, 1997. So... John Denver's the one who did Country Roads, right? Yes. Okay. I think so. Yep. Ooh, this guy. Otherwise, I have it wrong since 20 years. <laughs> Your turn, Mr. Blob. Yeah, in 1971, uh, Take Me Home Country Roads by John Denver. All right. Uh, you only did one, I think? Uh, I did John Denver and... Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so I will take uh, Ben Kingsley here, 1943. He is an English actor, Gandhi and Betrayal, born in Scarborough, England. He is 79 today, and I think I've seen him in other movies, but I don't remember which. I don't follow actors, so. Yes. In 1943, uh, also, we have Pete Quaife. He is British rock bassist for The Kings from 1963 uh, to 69. One of their songs is Sunny Afternoon. And cartoonist, he is. Uh, he was born in Tavistock, Devonshire, England, and he died in 2010. Dang. Um, I uh, I first read his uh, his last name as something else uh, that I'm not gonna say over the. <laughs> yeah, <show>. yeah. <laughs> I I know what you mean, but uh, <laughs> that's what I thought also when I saw the name. Uh, da da on a sunny afternoon. Yep. And. In uh, 1946, we have uh, Diane von Fürstenberg. It's her 76th birthday. She's a Belgian-born American fashion designer. Uh, she invented the wrap dress or designed it. I don't know. She was born in Brussels, in oh. Belgium. Wrap dress. What is that? Okay, so a kind of dress that wraps around or something like a robe dress or... Huh. If that is what I think it is, it's a nice thing. That's a cool dress. Let me look it up. We also have oh. in... What's up? Ah, uh, that... uh, no, that's not the one I thought it is, but it's also nice. Ah. We also have in 1947, Burton Cummings well, it, uh, is a Canadian rock singer, songwriter, and keyboardist. Guess who? These eyes. Born in Winnipeg, Canada. All right. And then we have, in 1948, we have Donna Summer, a U.S. disco and pop singer-songwriter, Love to Love You Baby, on the radio in Last Dance, born in Boston, Massachusetts, dying in 2012. And she uh, also slaughtered MacArthur Park, by the way. She what? She slaughtered it. 
she huh. destroyed it. <laughs> she, uh, she did a disco version which um, uh, did not live up to the original. Oof. So she slaughtered it in a bad way. Yeah, but it wasn't her fault. It uh, was the fault of the producers who uh, pushed it to her. Uh. In 1951, we have Tom Hamilton, American rock bassist for Aerosmith, uh, for example, the song Dream On. He was born in Colorado Springs in, surprisingly, Col Colorado. Yeah. Dream on, dream on, yeah. I'm a bad singer. Uh, that, that's okay. I probably like, 19... made everybody's ears bleed. In 1951, we have the very famous American actor Val Kilmer. It's his 63rd birthday. He did Top Secret and, of course, Top Gun and, of course, Willow. He was born in Los Angeles, California. And, by the way, Willow, that's the Nintendo game. The movie came out before that. It's a great movie. I heard I have it here but didn't watch it yet. But uh, I recommend, if you can play the game, watch the movie. Uh, You'll probably like both. Uh, wasn't Willow a book or something? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, I think that was a book series first and then they did the movie and then the game. Yeah, because I remember uh, in The Simpsons, uh, one of the characters, um, I think uh, Milhouse's dad or something, uh, was like he had some kind of line. He's like, I was in the play. I was Willow. I was the Willow or something. I don't know. Uh, no, it, it seems it was uh, directly created as a movie by... Uh, it was written by Bob Dolman and uh, the movie was produced by George Lucas. Huh. Oh, and they also did a new movie and a TV series, but we talk about the 1988 movie here, of course. So the idea was conceived in 1972 and uh, it took uh, apparently 16 years then from the idea to the finished movie. Dang. Well, I mean, like, apparently Black Adam was in the works since 2008 and it just released this year. So a lot of projects, you know, really, you know, take a long time for one reason or another. Yeah. Anyway, 1962, we have Jennifer Higdon. Uh, is a U.S. classical music composer, 2010 Pulitzer, three Grammy Awards, as well as an educator, Curtis Institute of Music, 1994 through present, born in Brooklyn, New York. Happy birthday to that. And then, yes. uh, wait a minute, I see 1950. Uh, Carl Reiner, d double back. Uh, 1950? Hold on, is that deaths or... Uh, 1950... Oh, yeah. Oh, you're, you're at the wrong thing. We uh, have one in 1977, and then we... Okay. I was reading... Oh, oh, I was reading something else. Who's who's Carl Reimer? C Carl Renner? Uh, uh, we, we get to that later. Oh, is that Deaths? Yes. Oh, okay, that's why... I, okay, it says TDH Deaths right there. I'm, I'm blind. I'm an idiot. Um, anyway... Uh, let's see here. Let's move on up here to we did that. We did that guy. We did that. Uh, Nineteen uh, seventy-seven. Nineteen seventy-seven. We have Donald Trump Jr., a U.S. businessman and son of Donald Trump and Ivana Trump, born in New York City, New York. Wow. And as you as you know, Donald Trump is that guy who uh, had that TV show where he fired everyone. Yeah, you're fired. Yeah. Then we also have Psy, also, uh, born on the same date. Same, so he is. Uh, so Mr. Gungam style is uh, the same as a, uh, as a uh, little Trump. Uh, he's a South Korean yes. pop star, Gangnam style, born in Seoul, South Korea. And as you've said, Blob, Gangnam style is actually a really sad song. Yeah, I would uh, invite uh, our viewers to look up what the lyrics mean. Yeah. Because. Uh, I don't uh, know exactly, uh, but it was talked about on a show that the lyrics are actually not uh, um, very, uh, not not as happy as the melody. Yes, well, same as pumped up kicks. You know, that's about a school shooting. So I know. Yeah. And you, you don't uh, like Mondays, I guess. I I don't like um, Mondays. 
<laughs> oh, you said it. You said it. I made you say it. <laughs> anyway, in, in 1980, it's his uh, 42nd birthday today. We have Richie McCaw. He's a New Zealand rugby player for the All Blacks. He was born in Oamaru, New Zealand. Ah. All right. And. In uh, 1995, we have our final birth for today uh, at the American gymnast uh, Gabby Douglas. She was uh, born in 1995, uh, 27th birthday today. Happy birthday. And she had great successes such as the 2012 Olympic all-around champion, 2012 and 2016 team gold. She was born in Newport News, Virginia. Huh. Wait, she was born in Newport News. That sounds like a newspaper. Yeah, it but, does, uh, but there's actually, that's a city, there's, I think there's a Newport News in Rhode Island, too. So, also, know. if something, if something happens there on the, uh, uh, on the water, you have the Newport News, Newport News. Yes. Moving All on right. into deaths, starting us off, we spoke about him earlier today in 192 AD. We have Commodus, was an emperor of Rome from 180 to 192. He was murdered at the age of 31 after a poison attempt. So, spoke about him uh, at length earlier this, this show. So I will go on and move forward to 335. We have St. Yes. Sylvester I was a Catholic pope and he died in office, as they usually do. So, and that's why... That's why the day today is uh, called Sylvester in many countries. It's I New Year's Eve. That. New Year's Eve in uh, England. Uh, I mean in America, but uh, Sylvester in many countries. Okay. The more you know. Yes. And in uh, 1719, we have John Flamsteed. He was an English astronomer and the first an uh, first astronomer royal died at 73. Huh. He was born in 1646. Yeah, astronomer royal sounds like uh, like uh, like all these other positions, you know, for various other artists and you know whatnot, you know, or yeah. positions. So an, an actual like royal position in astronomy for the king. Yes, indeed, Flamsted was in uh, in 1675 made quote the king's astronomical observator, end quote. And with this became the first astronomer royal. In this role, he laid the foundation for the internationally re renowned Royal, Green royal Greenwich Observatory, which is uh, also where the Greenwich Meridian time came from. Yep. In 1950, In we have Karl Renner, was an Austrian president from 1918. Uh, you, you skipped you skipped a few. I skipped a few? Yeah, we have one in 1775. 1775, it's not on your list here. Oh, uh, then I'll do it. It's uh, Richard Montgomery, Irish general in the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. He died in the attack on Quebec at 37, and we talked about it earlier also on the uh, events. Oh, uh, yes. That's why I, why I included him here, ah. but... Uh, you look up the other uh, list, so it's not there. Uh, Alright, your turn. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, in 1950, we have Karl Renner, an Austrian president from 1918 through 20, as well as 1945 through 50. That's a big gap. He died at the age of 80. Five years president is not that long. Uh, no, but no, from 20 to 45. Like, he oh, served yes, from yes. 1918 through 20, so two years ser service, and then 25 yes. years later, he did a five year service. And the uh, interesting thing is that he became president after both world wars. Oh my god, you're right. What the hell? That's weird. Huh. That and is, I, I that would is need bizarre. to look it up if he was on the... I would need to look it up to see if he was on the Tyrol train. Huh. The what train? Oh, there was this train in Tyrol uh, where they tried to uh, murder all the important people up. Uh, at the end of World War Two, but it was. Uh... Oh yeah, did we talk about that a couple like a while ago or something? Some, I, I, it's yeah. kind of fuzzy in my memory. Oh. But we also have one year later. We have H. Guy Bedwell, a U.S. thoroughbred trainer, North uh, American champion in wins times seven, 
Earnings in 1918 through 19. First Triple Crown winner, so that's interesting. Uh, first was Sir Barton, died at the age of 76. So rest in peace, H. Guy Bedwell. And then you got one here in uh, 68. All right, we have in 1968. Um, oh, the German chess master Karl Aarhus. He uh, was German chess champion in 1950, and he died at 85 years old. Huh. And uh, his son, uh, who was, I think, Herbert Aarhus. Yes, he was a great uh, German chess player also, and known for his many, 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 many chess puzzles, uh, mostly checkmate in two. Nice. Oh, checkmate in two moves? Yes. That's rough. Like, that's that's a kick in the teeth right there, my friend. Like, oh, no, no, those were composed uh, puzzles, like, uh, he, he created them. Oh, I thought it was an actual match, like, clink, 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 checkmate, you know? Like, uh, no, 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 that, that's, <laughs> that's not how it went. Oh, okay, I get it. But something that uh, went uh, very sad also is uh, Roberto Clemente, uh, Clemente in 1972. He was a Puerto Rican Baseball Hall of Fame outfielder, 15 times MLB All-Star, World Series 1960 and uh, 71. There also as MVP. Uh, he was playing for the Pittsburgh Pirates and died in a plane crash at uh, only 38 years old, born in 1934. That's a tragedy. Like, I, I wonder if he's one of the... Because I, I remember, um, like, there was one instance where, like, an entire football team or something, like, died in a bus accident or some boat... I think it was actually a boat accident or something. I don't know. But, but yeah, there's a lot of, lot of uh, crazy things that happen in history. Yeah, and there was also the plane crash with the entire Red Russian Army Corps that we uh, talked about recently. Yeah, that one, too. We also have Marshall was... McLuhan died on the state in 1980. He was a Canadian writer and prophet of the digital age. Uh, the medium is in the message. Died at the age of 69, and he was born in 1911. Huh. And then in uh, 1985, we have Ricky Nelson, a U.S. pop uh, rock star. Uh, Hello, Mary Lou, It's Late, and Garden Party, as well as an actor, The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, as well died in a plane crash at the age of 45. That's not good. Hello, Mary Lou. Take my heart. I'm old, sweet Mary Lou. I'm so in love with you. And I butchered that completely. <laughs> Back to All right. you, you got 90. In 1990, we have Vasily Grigorievich Lazarev, cosmonaut on the Soyuz 12 and Soyuz 18A. He died at the age of 62. Ah, cosmonaut. We need, to, yeah. we need to pay more attention to the astronauts and cosmonauts and such of the world. You know, they, like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, people who've been in space now, but as, as, you know, compared to everybody else, it's still a, it's still a pipe dream. So. Yeah. We and got uh, one in 94. Oh, 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 I just see one in 1993. We have... Uh, Thomas J. Watson Jr., American businessman and politician. He was the president of IBM from 1952 to 1971 and a U.S. ambassador to the Soviet Union from 1979 to 1981. So that's a career. He, di he died of a stroke at, 90, uh, at 79. Dang. So wow. So he was a president of IBM, a businessman, politician, ambassador. That's, you know... There's not a lot of lines here, but this is a, this is one hell of a resume. So yeah, yeah. Then we also have Woody Strode, 1994, a U.S. football end, the L.A. Rams and the Calgary Stampeders. He's also an actor in Posse, Cotton Club, Vigilante, and Scream. Died of lung cancer at the age of 80. He was born in 1914. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So that that's kind of wild, being born all the way back then and and being in a movie like Scream. Like that's that's. That's wild. IBM was actually founded in 1911. Did you know that? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. As, as, as what, though? Like, there weren't computers back then. International Business Machines Corporation. Okay, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but they first uh, 
were uh, founded as the Computing Tabulating Recording Company. That is true, I remember this. And then uh, they switched it to IBM to, you know, easier. So. Yeah. And then I'm going to take this one here, 1995. Uh, the Calvin and Hobbes comic strip died on the state. We spoke about that earlier. You know, a sad day for me, you know, or whenever I found out about, like, oh, they're not doing it anymore. Um, but I'm not going to count that as one of my uh, one of my uh, articles. I'm going to move on up into uh, 2015. We have Natalie Cole, was a U.S. pop vocalist, Pink Cadillac, and Miss You Like Crazy. Died at the age of 65. Huh. Yes. In, uh, oh no! In I, yes, in 2021 we have the wonderful Betty White. She was uh, American Emmy Award winning comic actress with the longest TV career of a female entertainer. The Mary Tyler Moore Show as Sue Ann Nivens. The Golden Girls as Rose and in The Proposal. Uh, she died after suffering a stroke. Wonderful uh, show. Uh, yeah. Watch that if you didn't uh, yet. She didn't die of a stroke. What happened was uh, uh, Betty White and Queen Elizabeth II went and f dueled on a Highlander style battle because there can only be one. And unfortunately, the Queen won because she probably <laughs> cheated. Um, but Betty White uh, was murdered. She didn't die of a stroke. And I'm going to stick to that for the rest of my days. Uh, yeah. But man, and it's already been a year. Wow. Yeah, and she would have just had to survive uh, two and a half more weeks because she was born on January the seventh, uh, the seventeenth in nineteen twenty-two. So then she would have been one hundred years old. Yeah, that would have like that. That made a huge thing because Alice and I spoke at length about that every now and then. Uh, like, she was just a few weeks shy of, of hitting the hundred, you know. Yeah. And of course, memes were made, and oh, we spoke about this guy earlier. I believe maybe on the yeah. show. We have uh, in 2022, so today, Josef Ratzinger, also known as Pope Benedict XVI. He was a German Catholic Pope from 2005 to 2013. Then he stepped down and uh, uh, Pope Benedict uh, became Pope. You no, know. Pope, uh, not Benedict. Uh, um. uh, uh, no, Pope Francis, I mean. Yeah, Sorry. that one. Uh, so... Uh, Benedict the 16th, Josef Ratzinger, he died at the age of 95 yeah. today. May he rest in peace. Although, like, I'm not entirely sure. I might be committing a, a blaspheme right now. But I think anybody who steps down as being the voice of God is is damned to hell. But I'm not sure. I don't know how that... Uh, no, I don't think so. Huh. I don't know. Anyway, that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may find interesting, including but unlimited to all things Omni Coalition. For your dose of Passive Edge Daily, we stream every day at 10 in the morning Pacific time, which is 11 Mountain, 12 Central, 1 p.m. Pacific, and... 7 p.m. German. Yep. Uh, any other time zones, uh, you know, Google it. You can figure it out yourself. It's not that difficult. Anyway, uh, for all of you and all of us, I am Xander. I'm Protoblob. And earlier in the show, we had uh, Alice, we had uh, MTM, um, and I'm certain uh, we had a couple people pop in every now and then, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but anyway, uh, so until, until you catch us tomorrow, or I highly suggest uh, you uh, come join us for our The Omni Coalition Presents The Kicked Peanut 2022-2023 New Year's Extravaganza, starting in a few hours here. Actually, in an hour and 47 minutes, um, 10 hours for me, uh, going to be streaming live, uh, closing wow. out this year, bringing in the new one, bringing up a whole bunch of ideas, talking, having fun, and just general extravaganza type uh, situation. So come join us and all that stuff. Anyway, uh, whenever you catch us, uh, until then, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles! Toodles! Happy New Year! Happy New Year.